Printing on fabric. My one and only dream I abandoned a long time ago that I now want to revive. Not only is it super cool to like print everything on anything, it's also super practical to personalize every item you can think of. So this is both a tutorial but also an experiment because I don't know how it ends up looking. But that started the beginning. When I first started my very very first print I was thinking this is easy. This, this looks so easy. In fact people are doing this in primary school, right? The potato stamp technique. <laughs> Am I the only one who did this? But I was thinking I could just print everything on anything and make an uncountable amount of presents and cool prints and personalized items. Yeah, that didn't happen. Okay, so this first page was printed back in 2019 and I was so afraid to touch any fabric again after that. <laughs> but um, I improved. I printed again and again and there were always a lot of mistakes that I've learned from. And I think the print I'm most proud of is this Art Nouveau inspired one still love her. But for this video I've decided to go into fabric printing again and I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready. I'm so afraid of printing this because I only bought like three, four and I'm, I'm so terrified because I apparently didn't learn from my mistakes because last time I only bought one and I fucked that up. <laughs> so I have like three tries for this. If I'm gonna personalize something I want it to be something specific. Something that I love and that if I wear it or have it with me I actually like it. As for the printing subject, I was thinking of printing one of my favorite shows from back then when I was young, but I still love it now and I've prepared something. If you know where this is from, I want to be friends with you. I want to talk about this all day long. So this is an anime called Nana and I discovered it back when I was, I don't know, 13 or something. And um, this is about two girls moving to Tokyo. <clears throat> it's so perfect. And it had its hype a few months back on TikTok and I like decided to rewatch it and fell back into the rabbit hole. And now I'm making my whole personality about this. Again. So as I said, I made the sketch in Procreate using some smokers photo references and mashed it together to this black and white sketch of the two protagonists Nana and Hachi and then I transferred them onto the board itself. But you can also just draw directly on the board with markers and stuff. I'm just lazy. Okay, so the first stage is like the carving stage and I leave everything that is black on the board and everything that is like grey or white, um, that will be carved out by me. I'm always using this non-slip fabric so I can apply pressure on the board without it gliding all over the table and before actually starting to carve I try to sharpen my carving tools as much as possible because I don't want to slip, I don't want to cut myself, I just want it to cut smoothly and precisely. So let's uh, start carving. I always start the carving process with the basic shapes using a steady small carving knife and when I establish the basic shapes, I start using bigger knives, one at a time. So as I said, I discovered the series back as a teen and the whole show deals with quite realistic and adult themes, so I couldn't grasp everything at that time, but I always keep coming back to it. The older I get, the more I can relate to the characters and what they're going through, and the story just gets more tragic over time, so <laughs> that's why the series has such a special place in my heart.
before I print, I'm gonna change it to something new. I usually don't mind, but today I really, I really like my dress. <laughs> So I carved my board out and I wanted to make a test print first just to see if I carved everything or like I sometimes forget some lines just to be clear that everything is as I want it to be. And it looked exactly as I wanted it to. It was crisp and detailed and I just have to bring it on this bag somehow. <laughs> I usually use special oil printing paint, but I'm not sure if it will stay on fabric if I wash it. So I bought this special fabric paint. As soon as I opened the can, I knew that was the smell of water-based ink. I hate water-based ink, um, but I didn't read the paint beforehand, so it was my own fault. The problem with water-based ink is that it dries pretty quickly and clumps up on the roll, uh, so it doesn't look as crisp and smooth, and it also is like a time problem. I have to work really quickly, so it doesn't make any problems later. And I also have to wash the board in between, because otherwise it will add up and don't be as detailed anymore. I first wasn't sure how to make sure the board is centered on the tote bag, so I measured the center and put something inside so the ink doesn't go through the other side of the fabric uh, and placed it that way. I also had to figure out the pressure, I don't want it to be too light nor too strong, so I played around until it felt and looked right to me. <laughs> I fucked up! Oh no, I only have three more uh, tries left. Damn it, and my, and my paint is drying because it is water-based. Ah! <laughs> Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. How could I not notice this? But during the process when I do so many things at once, I was so focused on making it centered that I totally forgot to look if it was the right way around. And yeah, unfortunately it was my favorite printout of them all. It is the most detailed one, but I cannot use it. But this happens, I just have to do my next one, my next try. So for the next round, I tried the same paint as before and used the single-use mixing pad because the paint dried too quickly and I just wanted to make sure that everything was fine and I didn't want to clean it every few minutes. And guys, I really didn't like this paint, but I wanted to give it another shot since I know that this paint holds onto the fabric while washing and this is something that is important. And yep, I didn't like the result either because it was too smudged. I don't know, when I apply less color, it is patchy and when I apply more, it loses all the details. So I made the decision for the next bag to use my oil colors. I just knew that these would work out great, they always did. But the downside is, beside the long drying time, I just don't know if they will last. I guess I have to find out later if they will stick onto the fabric. So this was my third bag and I like it. I like how it turned out. I think this is my favorite out of them all. I just wasn't sure if I can wash it.
But I'm not finished here. I bought myself a t-shirt a while back, a plain white t-shirt. It is oversized as hell. <laughs> um, and yeah, I want to print something on it and customize it. But instead of printing the same design from the back on it, I wanted to make small stamps to like customize the shirt because I don't like when uh, you can see where a shirt is from, like fan base wise. If you see it and people know where this is from, they know. And if they don't, they don't. And it's fine. And I don't like it being written out on the shirt itself. <laughs> I first thought of making two eyes in the back of the t-shirt. I took another board and measured the distance and size I want the eyes to have. And after I made the design in Procreate, I printed it out and transferred it onto the board again. And as for carving and printing, I did the same process as before. And to add something special to it, I wanted to make some stems to decorate around the eyes or maybe on front. Um, so I first started with the hand. I used this new material, um, these rubber blocks. These were great, just like little stems, so I could use them anywhere I want. And the material is more buttery, so the whole carving process is faster as for the eyes. Um, and it's also a lot smaller, of course. And for the smaller prints, I wanted to make uh, a little pin that looks like, yeah, well, it was pinned on the fabric with some charms on it. And also some little stars just so yeah I can decorate wherever I need some starry finishes. Okay, it's wrinkly and all. And I don't have an iron to fix this because <laughs> I'm a broke student who doesn't have such things. <laughs> Thank you. 
and this material is less soggy. Is this the right word? <laughs> if you apply paint on it, it doesn't need as much pressure, so it doesn't need a press and I can just put it slowly down with some pressure by my hand. And also, let's not forget the security paper inside, this is important. So this is the finished shirt and how I would style it, I know it's a bit oversized, <laughs> it was like a leftover shirt, but I like it, I like how it's not too much. I wouldn't like the huge design before on this shirt to wear and this is just perfect, just some small details, uh, yeah. Okay, this was the video about me printing on fabric and I kind of feel so empowered that I like defeated my fear and it kind of worked. It kind of didn't, <laughs> but it also kind of worked. Um, and yeah, I, I have to keep some mental notes in mind because uh, I still have to find the right colors because I don't know if these uh, oil colors will stay on the fabric, but they work better than the water-based ones, so I still have to uh, see which one works best. And also maybe less detailed designs because they smudge anyways. Okay, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you want to see more of this, you can subscribe and see you guys in my next video. Bye!